hello lovely friends how are you all doing today i hope you are well <clears throat> i'm okay <sighs> still a bit chilly we've we've climbed in temperature a little bit but yeah i mean it's still <laughs> it's a chilly old day indoors oh someone was asking someone said in comments a couple of days ago about um they said do you not have any heating is that why you're cold no <laughs> i do have heating I just can't turn it on because it's too expensive and it's not just me this is nothing to do with being frugal or poor or anything like that it's that our fuel prices are through the roof i have friends where both both parties work full time earning an income but they can't afford to put the heating on so anyway that's how it is so we just wrap up and the other thing to say which is relevant today is <clears throat> I would normally film this at my desk in the kitchen. However, I think my freezer is on its last legs. Oh, for goodness sakes. Oh, we had all those issues with the fridge and the motor was gurning so hard and the door and the... It died, I turned it off. The freezer is now doing similar. The seal is perfect, but the motor keeps kicking in and really gurning away. So I timed it the other day. I have 18 minutes of quiet. Then the motor kicks in for 35 minutes and then it goes quiet again. So yeah, it, it's not working to film in there. I mean, I think I've got loads of recipes I want to bring you and what I'm gonna have to do is plan them really carefully so I can do my chat, introduce the ingredients, get the recipe underway in 18 minutes then during the 35 minutes of noise <laughs> turn the camera off do the simmer do the blending whatever it is and then when the noise stops again turn the camera back on and carry on filming we'll see i will make it work but it's going to have to be sorted and it's going to be an expense which brings me to the subject of today this is <clears throat> A, a little catch up on how did your no spend January go and let's qualify it straight away of course we're doing some spending uh, we will be spending money on our bills rent mortgages water council tax whatever it is and we'll be spending money on food however for the sake of simplicity that's a given, and when we say no spend, we're talking about not doing any extraneous spending over and above those basic necessities that we need to meet. So how did you all get on? <laughs> I hope you did okay. Um, I've made a few notes, which I'm gonna to refer to from time to time, because I don't want to forget anything. So excuse my head being down. But the main thing is, yeah, how did you get on with those of you who've done it for the first time this year? Some of you, for some of you, I know it's a continuation you started at the tail end of last year or this time last year. But how did you get on? Um, was, there, <clears throat> was there anything in particular that you struggled with this month? Um, and if there was, let's acknowledge it. Let's not hide from it. Let's acknowledge it because then we might be able to do something about that and address it later on. Um, oh, and the main point <laughs> just right away is, <clears throat> did you manage to put anything away into savings? I hope so. I've managed to squirrel a little bit more away. Oh, and just from my point of view, right from the outset, in terms of no spend, I had an almost no spend month. Uh, let me just check, looking here at the cost. I did spend two pounds on a book, but that two pounds did come from my kind of, my normal weekly sort of food, etc. budget of 35 quid. So it wasn't, it wasn't a spend over and above what I would normally spend. So I'm gonna say it's a lot. So yeah, other than food and bills, I spent two quid this month. I'm gonna have some bigger bills coming though, that freezer. Right, okay, so. If you found it difficult, 
especially if this is the first time you've ever really tried to go completely no spend. I know you may in the past have said, oh, we'll curb our spending, we'll only give ourselves 20 quid a week for treats or whatever, and this may be the first time you've said, actually, nothing. Outside of bills and food, we are not spending at all. If you find it difficult, please don't beat yourself up. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I I'm, I'm keep referring to my notes because I've <laughs> I made a load of notes and bullet points I want to uh, share with you today. But yeah, if you struggled, please don't beat yourself up because the fact is, it takes time to change habits. It takes time to bury an old habit you no longer want and to establish a new habit. You know, think of it like, um, okay, let's say, let's say if you want to give up smoking or give up chocolate or whatever it is, stopping doing those things can be really difficult and you're not going to be perfect from day one. Well, on day one, you might be perfect because it's only day one, but by day 30, you might be really struggling because you're trying to stop doing something you've been doing for a long time. Likewise, if you're trying to start something, whether it's a diet or, um, you know, like a five, like couch to 5k. It's hard to start that thing. Again, within the first week or two weeks, it may be a breeze because it's a novelty, it's new, it's exciting. Yeah, I can do this, I'm on this mission. By week three or by week four, it starts to become a little bit boring. So, if you did struggle, don't beat yourself up. I'm gonna talk more about guilt um, later on because it's 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 really important I think so yeah don't beat yourself up just recognize that I'm trying to get rid of an old habit and establish a new habit and I think um, I seem to remember that hearing reading seeing whatever that six weeks folks say it's, it takes six weeks to ditch an old habit or six weeks to create a new habit. So we're early, early, early days. Please don't beat yourself up. Ah, yes. Now, I know <laughs> from comments quite early in the month that some of you did have a really big expense. Um, that might have been, you know, your furnace or your boiler broke or your fridge broke and you've had to replace it. <clears throat> Look these things happen, that's life. It's a one-off, hopefully. Hopefully it's a one-off. Again, this is back to that, don't beat yourself up. When we say no spend, we're talking about <coughs> extraneous fripperies, if you like. Things that you don't really need. You just buy them because you're in the habit of buying them. But something like a furnace breaking or a, f a refrigerator breaking, that's not in the kind of frippery, oh, I kind of fancy it, I want it. That's a need. So when you need to replace something big, yeah, you kind of think, oh, let's put a dent in my no spend month. Don't even think twice about it. Get the repair done, get the replacement done, whatever it is, but carry on with your no spend goal because the fact is part of our no spend goal is so that we can stop wasting on fripperies by not spending and put that money into a savings account so that in future it won't work right now if you don't have any savings right now but in a year's time if you keep practicing no spend in a year's time you'll have built up that cushion that safety net in your savings account so that you know, heaven forbid it happens again, but the next time something breaks, it's slightly less stressful because you've accumulated those savings via not spending on fripperies. And I was saying this the other day about the computer. I hate spending money on boring stuff like boilers, furnaces, computers, fridges, freezers. I hate it. I'd far rather spend my money on fun stuff, but, 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 I would far rather not spend on rubbish 
have the savings so that when those things do break, I can replace them without too much concern, without too much thought. I know that I've got the money to do it. I can do it and I save myself a whole heap of stress. And some people will be like, oh, but you, you know, your whole year is like, oh, you're denying yourself. You're not having this, you're not having that. Fine, I would rather go without so that when I need it, the money is there so that I don't have to stress, I don't have to take a loan, I don't have to get into debt, I don't have to borrow from a family member, or whatever. So yeah, I know some of you did have a really, <laughs> really rubbish start to a no spend month or year in so much as something blew up and on the 3rd of January you had to fork out 500 quid, 1,000 quid or whatever to get something sorted. Look, the money police are coming. Um, deal with it, put it behind you, get back on track and get focused again on not spending, putting that not spend money into a savings account so that in a year's time, when the next thing goes wrong, the money is there. Now, slightly different to having that big, big expense of something major in your life. It might have been car, you know, I know a lot of you have cars, but cars, fridge freezers, boiler going out. Some of you will have had some small, let's call them slip ups. You'll have had some small slip ups this month. <clears throat> a coffee, a newspaper, something rather like that. I'm going to suggest um, that you start journaling. I mean, I, I know I suggested it before, but <laughs> yeah, seriously, journal every penny on paper with a pen, not even using your phone. So have a little notebook and pen in your, or pencil in your bag, pocket, whatever it is. So every time you go to almost have a slip up, hopefully it will stop you, whether it's a coffee or even a packet of gum or one of those little small expenses, because they add up, and this is the point. Every time you're about to hand over a quid or a dollar, get your notebook out of your bag, get your pen out, you might have to rummage a bit in your bag, oh, where is it, where is it? Open your notebook, click your pen on, and write down that thing that you're about to purchase. Coffee, how much is coffee, is it? two pound for takeaway coffee, packet of gum, 50p, whatever it is. The time it takes you to get your notebook and your pen out and start doing all that annoying, because it'll be annoying, writing, it might just be enough time to make you think, oh, hang on a minute, I can't be doing with this. I can't be doing with this. Forget it. I'm not going to have the coffee. I'm not going to have the packet of gum, whatever it is. Having that journal might on occasion stop you from having the slip up. But even so, there are gonna be slip ups. So, um, the worst thing, yeah, I think the worst, the worst thing we can do to ourselves is have guilt. If you have a little slip up, let's say a coffee with a mate, not with a mate, a coffee on your own, because coffee with mates, that might have been planned. It would be all too easy to say, oh, oh, that's it, I'm, I've, oh, I've spent, I've, I've mocked up for this month, oh, forget it. Well, I'll start again in February. Yeah, I ended up, oh, never mind. Oh, I'm, uh. <laughs> you beat yourself up, you do all the guilt stuff, and then you, you almost fulfil your own fall down by saying well you know what I'll just do it I'll start it new next month don't wait for next month start it again straight away you've had a sip up you know what we're human that's okay but tomorrow get straight back on the wagon the pony the bicycle whatever it is start again but also have a little think about what were the circumstances of the slip up why did you make that purchase? It might have been a little trinket in a charity shop, thrift store. It might have been that coffee, whatever it is. Just have a little think about what happened in that 
moment that you were buying it. Were you bored? Were you lonely? Were you with friends and your other friends were spending? If you can identify what was going on in that moment, you might be able to help yourself avoid that moment in the future. So, you know, if you're bored, rather than going online and browsing Etsy or whatever it is, <laughs> pick up a book instead or pick up the phone and chat with a friend, however you need to work it. You know, if it was because you were out with friends and they were all spending, you're just going to have to, in your head, go, OK, I'm out with my friends. I'm going to enjoy their company and the chatter, but I'm not going to fall into what they're doing of the spending. I'm just going to focus on the chat and the conversation. But the big, big, big thing about it is, is don't dwell on that. Um, <laughs> it sort of sounds a bit hot and heavy and serious suddenly, doesn't it? And I don't mean it um, to be, but... The main thing is, is to not, not get wrapped up in the guilt and focus on that slip up and do that whole thing of the self-sabotage thing of, well, I've slipped up now, so I might as well carry on slipping up. Rather like if you're on a diet, um, <clears throat> actually, this is a good point too, but if you're on a diet and you accidentally eat a donut, you know what? You know, so what? So what, you ate a donut. Look, enjoy it, enjoy it in that moment, but the minute after that moment is finished and you've finished enjoying it, get back to the diet. Whatever you do, don't think to yourself, well, I had that donut, so, oh, I'm a failure. Guilt thrives on negativity and it will self-sabotage you. Don't then think, well, I might as well eat a whole box of, how many donuts? I think it was 12. I'm just remembering the donuts the doctors used to bring into work. <laughs> oh, I did love them. Um, the donuts, not the doctors. I mean, I love the doctors. But yeah, don't. I've had one. Well, I might as well have the next 12 or the next 11 that's left in the box. We all have slip ups. We all make mistakes. Accept it. Get back on the wagon, pony, bicycle, whatever it is. Put that behind you, but, but try and learn from it. Why, why did that slip up happen? And on that, uh, using that analogy with the diet, I think it's really important to, it's that SMART goal, isn't it? What's it called? SMART? I don't know, achievable, and whatever it is. You need to find your own way in this. I am incredibly strict. <laughs> That's fine. And that works for me. For some, for some people, it may be too much. Don't become a martyr to it. If you have a slip up, it might be that actually you need to have that slip up each week. And it's kind of counter of what I'm saying, isn't it? It's back to that diet thing. If you set out on a diet where you are only, only going to eat raw vegetables every single day, yeah, you can probably do that for about three weeks and lose a load of weight. And then you have a donut and there's like, ah, I'm going to eat a box of donuts. The fact is it's, it, it, for you, that's too much and it's not sustainable. And I think one of the, the great things about being no spend or low spend is you find your own comfort level with it. I mean, try all extreme to begin with, of no spend whatsoever. But that might be too much. And that slip up of every Friday you have a coffee at lunchtime with a colleague well, actually, maybe you need to plan that into your spending because you sort of do need it. It it gives you a lot. And just that one thing added back in may make your no spend for the year doable. Don't be a martyr. Don't starve yourself. And that's that's the thing, isn't it? Back to the diet analogy. Yeah, we could all starve ourselves. We can all starve ourselves for two or three weeks, lose two or three pounds. Brilliant, even more than that. But you can't do that for the next year or the rest of your life if you're in a really frugal situation like I am. Find a level. So with those slip-ups, if it is that coffee on a Friday with a mate during your lunch break, 
that might be worth keeping because you get so much more from it than just the coffee. But on the other hand, yeah, if you've had a couple of sip ups, just check them out and see, you know, try and think about why they're happening. I've written at the bottom here. Ah, okay, yeah, with the sip ups. This is a, as an example. <clears throat> did you, during the month of January, did you buy any food and drink outside of your home? So I'm not talking now about that, that coffee on the Friday lunch break with a chum, because that's about, that's about so much more than the coffee. That's about you, your wholeness, your love, your companionship. But yeah, I said, did I, did I end up at any point during January leaving my house without food and drink? And therefore, while I was out, whether it's a work day or a day trip or whatever, did I end up buying something to drink or to eat? Might be just as simple as a bottle of water, a cup of tea in a cafe. This is one of the great areas where you can really focus on your no spend. You can really challenge yourself to say, I am never going to leave my house without food and drink. Because all of that stuff outside the house does add up. And if you did, for example, there was one day, a work day, and you ended up buying sandwiches from the corner shop or from the supermarket on a meal deal, you get your sarnies, you get, I don't know, a bag of crisps or a piece of fruit and a drink keep coming back to asking yourself questions did i did i buy those sandwiches because i didn't organize my time and this is i'm not kind of blaming people i'm not having to go at anyone but this is to, to ask yourself why did i end up buying sandwiches for lunch that day is it because i got up late and i was in such a rush i didn't have time to make sandwiches in the morning at home before i left the house and if that's the case, okay, you've got a really clear, that's easy, that's an easy problem to solve. You get up half an hour earlier, 15 minutes earlier, it doesn't take long to make a sandwich. Is it because by Wednesday or Thursday in the week, you didn't have any ingredients to make your lunches with? Okay, we can learn from that and say, well, I need to, on my shopping list, I need to make sure on a Saturday or Sunday when I do my shopping, I need to make sure I've got all the ingredients for a whole week of lunches at work and, you know, have your reusable drinks bottle. There are all sorts of water stations in public places these days. In other words, I am going to make sure that every time I leave the house for more than half an hour, obviously, I was going to say if I go to the post office, I don't take food and drink with me. I do take a bottle of water because sometimes that queue is blooming long or I end up coming back from the post office and I get chatting with a friend and it's like, I'm getting that first, have a glug. So yeah, maybe make that, if you've had a few slip ups in January, maybe make that your little rule. Just have one rule for February, apart from the, the kind of global rule of trying not to spend. In February, say to yourself, I am never leaving my front door without food and drink on me that I prepared myself at home for very, very little cost because I bought the ingredients in my weekly shop at the weekend or whenever it was. And the other thing <clears throat> to try, I'm going to give you a couple of things to try. If you've got to the end of January and you've thought, I, didn't, I don't feel like I've really saved much. I can't see the difference yet. Well, firstly, give it a while. Secondly, journal, because then you might find that there have been a few, let's call them slip-ups. <laughs> there have been a few slip-ups that you haven't even clocked. But maybe one of the things you can think about is, and even if you do it for just one week, one week and see the difference, you might need to do a bit of research in advance, looking up recipes and what have you. All the recipes 
on my in the kitchen playlist would help in this regard but say to yourself when you do your weekly shop i'm going to do a weekly shop this week and i'm not going to buy any processed food i'm going to get everything cooked from scratch yeah it takes a bit of time it takes a bit of organization and like anything new it takes longer when you do something for the first time than when you do it for the thousandth time in a couple of years time but that might be worth a try maybe that's something you can introduce is one week of every month everything is scratch cooked uh, so you're just buying basic ingredients no processed food processed food costs more because more hands have been involved with doing it and I know there will be people who say oh but I'm busy I work full time I've got family when am I supposed to do it it is doable I can hands down swear to it because you know when I was working full time as a nurse doing one or two days traveling all the way into Kent going and seeing to my great aunt and her cares and her cooking and shopping and cleaning and bathing and all that and on top of that keeping my allotment going and on top of that doing all my scratch cooking so I just kicked the um, tripod it's quite a lot it does take a lot of time and effort but if you're trying to cut down your spending if you're trying to get rid of those debts or if you're trying to save up for a big thing like a fridge a car, a house move. It's so worth the effort. And you you know what, maybe you'll sustain it for a year, maybe you'll sustain it for five years, maybe it's only sustainable for you for six months, but that's enough to get you to that goal of why did you decide to have a no spend year in the first place? So it is doable with family and full-time job and being a full-time farmer, nearly. So yeah, give it a go. Um, what else did I want to say? That's the other thing about, um, so that's my little two, two challenges. Well, the big message today is don't feel guilty if you have a slip up. Guilt is, is such a wasteful emotion. Just get straight back on with your program of no spend. If you had a huge expense at the beginning of the year, that's fine. These things happen. You can carry on with your no spend year. Keep saving, keep saving. And then in a year's time, if such and such a thing happens again, you'll be prepared. But two little extra challenges. That one of having a week of no processed food bought in your weekly shop. Cook everything from scratch. That'll save you money. But that little rule, that one simple rule, because it's quite an easy one to remember as well, isn't it, of never leaving home, never going out of your front door without food and water, or food and drink, sorry. Some of you may prefer something other than water. Because how many times have any of us, and one of you was mentioning this, oh, who was it? And it was a great comment that you go into the corner shop for a packet of gum on your way to work, and you end up buying five quids worth of other stuff. How many times do you go into a corner shop to buy a bottle of water and you end up getting a newspaper, a magazine, a, a packet of gum, maybe a chocolate bar, and this, that, the other on top, and that bottle of water for a quid, you end up, you come out of the shop and you've spent 10 quid. <laughs> How? How have we spent 10 quid? But it happens, we've all done it, we all do it, we've been there, done that. That wouldn't happen if, when you left your house in the morning, you had food and drink with you. Give it a go, let me know what you think. Um, I think that one little tweak, never leaving home without food and drink, might help a bit if you've been having slip-ups, because I'm, I am thinking that some of the slip-ups will be to do with food and drink. Try this scratch cook, maybe not this month, maybe for February, just say to yourself, I'm never leaving home without food and drink. And then in March, introduce the idea of at least one week in the month, it's all home cooked stuff, no processed food. But more than anything, if you started the month with great intentions and then you 
fell at a couple of hurdles, don't beat yourself up, don't feel guilty, pick yourself up, get back on with it and try and learn from why that thing happened so that you can hopefully avoid it happening again in February. Right, that's it, I'm <laughs> getting chilly again. It's the sitting still thing, I need to move around, move around, move around, so that's what I'm going to do. I hope that will be useful. Uh, I just think let's encourage each other and you know in comments below let's share our successes for the month of January did you manage to put a bit into savings I mean you might not want to say the exact amount but share with us if you were able to put a bit of money into savings rather than spending it because you know that's the encouragement we all need isn't it uh, what were your success stories and if you feel like you've done something wrong and failed and oh uh, please don't you can share that too and we'll certainly i will try to bolster you and get you back up to getting back on track with things oh, right um i spent two pounds in january i'm chuffed but <laughs> i've got a fees on the way out and i've got a couple of things actually there are a couple of things that i need to buy in february which are over and above my usual I'll share those with you when we have a little roundup at some point, either in February or at the end. I'm going on cold. <laughs> I'll see you all again soon. <coughs> Lots of love from <laughs> the frigid front room. See you soon, everyone. Cheerio.